Hey, welcome to Taylor's Trick Taking Table. I'm taking up some of your pumpkin carving time by talking about Haggis. It's a climbing shedding game. After all, this is the tail end of climbing shedding month. It's a game... Ooh, do, do you smell that? It smells like ketchup in here. Yeah, like badly. Ooh, sorry. It's a game designed by Sean Ross, and I was able to find a picture of him. So welcome to the channel, Sean. Woo! Love your costume, by the way. The hook to Haggis is it's a tight yet incredibly flexible shedding game. And to show this, uh, let's go to the table and I'll show you how to play. In Haggis, the deck is made up of five suits, numbering two all the way to ten. In a two-player game, you would remove one of the suits. Here we have Haggis set up for two players. So each player will get a betting token, a jack, queen, and king, and then 14 cards each. They'll also get a player aid that tells them what cards they can play. In addition, there will be eight cards left over. That is known as the Haggis, and I'll explain how that comes into play a little bit later. Haggis is played over a series of rounds. In those rounds, players will earn points. A game ends on a predetermined set amount of points. 250 in a short game and 350 in a longer game. Players will earn points depending on if they shed out first, if they make their bet that they will shed out first, and any points on the cards they capture. Play starts with the person left at the dealer. Let's say it's Hot Dog Cup. So they'll look at their cards and they'll determine whether they think they can shed out first. So let's say they look at their cards and they decide that they think they won't shut out first. So in Haggis, you make uh, one of three bets. You can make a big bet, which is you're pretty confident that you're going to shut out, a little bet, which is half the points at 15, and, but you're kind of confident you can get out, or a no bet. So let's say Hot Dog Cub did a no bet. After Hot Dog Mug bets, they will play to the trick. What they can play is on this helpful reference card. So they can play one of three things, a set, a sequence, or a bomb. Sets are the same number of cards, so maybe a single eight or a pair of eights all the way up to six eights. Then a sequence is a minimum of three run of the same suit, so maybe a seven, eight, and nine of the same suit. Or you can play four run or five run. You can also do run of two pairs or run of three pairs. Bombs have different ranks, but bombs can be the three, five, seven, and nine of different suits, a combination of wilds, which I'll talk about in a bit, or three, five, seven, and nine of the same suit. So looking at Hot Dog's hand, they could play maybe two fours, or a single four, or they could possibly play this two, three, and four of the same suit, which would be a sequence. What's cool about Haggis is in addition to the cards in the hand, players always have these three wilds in their hand. And what these wilds, this jack, queen, and king can do, is they can substitute for any card. So let's say that Hot Dog Cup really wanted to play a four card sequence. They could grab this jack here, and that would count as a five of the same suit. So let's say they play that. So it would go to Mew, and now Mew needs to play the same number of cards. So four cards, and it needs to be a sequence of higher. So they could play a three, four, five, six of the same suit. So let's look through their hand. Not sure if they would have that. They do have a two, three, four. Shoot. Let's just say they pass. When a player passes, the player who won the trick collects the trick and then will lead the next trick. So let's say Hot Dog Cut led the next trick. So they could lead with a single four, meaning Mew would have to play another single card higher, maybe an eight, or they could possibly play a pair. So let's say they, oh, they actually have a bomb. So this is super interesting. So let's say they didn't actually want to play two sevens because that would break up their bomb. So maybe they save their bomb for later. So let's just do a simple example of them playing this four. So then it goes to Mew and say Mew really wanted to win this, they would play this 10. So what's cool is, in addition to wilds, these cards are also a queen and a king. So let's say Hot Dog Cut decides to play this queen. It comes to Mew, and let's say Mew passes, so Hot Dog would win this and lead the next trick. 
let's say they started with a 10, and Mu plays this king, so they really want to win it. So how bombs work is in turn order, you can play a bomb. So let's say Hot Dog Cup plays this three, five, seven, and nine. So they are all different suits as a bomb. So although bombs are super powerful because Hot Dog Cup will win this, unless Mew has a stronger bomb, which they do, <laughs> unless Mew plays that bomb. But uh, so Hot Dog Cup, if they play this bomb, whenever you win with a bomb, the cards actually go to the collected pile of your opponent. So Mew will get these cards. And so these have points on them, right? So about uh, uh, nine points there. But Hot Dog Cup will start the next trick. So it's an interesting push and pull of agency where although you're going to win the trick, you're actually giving points to your opponent. So let's fast forward to the end here. Let's say it's Mew's turn and they only have one card. So they play their final card, which is a 10. So immediately the opponent of the person who sheds out will count the number of cards they have. So in this case, Hot Dog has four. If they had had one of the wilds in front of them, that also counts because wilds in front count as part of your hand. So how it works is when Mew had shed it out, Hot Dog Cup would have counted one, two, three, four cards. And it is uh, actually counting as points for Mew. So it's five points per card in hand. In addition, for shedding out, Mew gets the cards in Hot Dog Cup's hand as captured, and they get the Haggis. So Mew would have gotten the 20 points from the hand, all the points in this capture pile now, and Mew could have bet before they played cards at the very start of the round, possibly, you know, 13 or, or sorry, 15 or 30 points, and they would have gotten that. In addition to all that, let's say Hot Dog Mug at the start, they could have bet 15 or 30. If you ever miss your bet, it goes to the other player. So let's say in this case, maybe Hot Dog Bet, Hot Dog Mug bid 30, they would have given their 30 also to Mew. So Mew would have made 60 plus 20 plus whatever's in there. So they uh, definitely did well. You would then shuffle up the cards and keep playing until a player hits or exceeds that threshold that you agreed upon at the start. And that is Haggis. You know, right before final thoughts, I think I'm going to shed this costume and maybe some of this hair. I'll be right back. Okay. Ooh. So, Haggis. This is a modern classic. I think that even though it's about 10 years old, it has this super classic feel. The game has a lot already said about it. I know it's pretty highly regarded in the ladder climbing shedding realm. I think it earns all that acclaim. I was genuinely a little nervous to, to cover it because it is such a well-regarded game. And I can easily understand that. I think the second you sit down with Haggis, uh, you, you have a somewhat of an overwhelming sense of choice. I think trick takers in general, this genre really lends itself to a tactical nature. You know, you get your hand, what am I going to do with it? They make, you make the most of it. But Haggis with those three wilds in front of you and all the bombs and all the combinations and all the choices, you just have so much agency that the first time you sit down, you're just like, whoa. The genius to me is the amount of choice. And it all harkens back to those three wilds in front of you, the Jack, Queen, King, which are also points and bombs. And the bombs are also points, the three, five, seven, and nine. There's such a, an interconnective tissue to this game. The fact that bombs go to your opponent and you <laughs> you bet in either 30 or 15, even you know, even the betting there's choice. There's just such a crazy amount of choice that the tactical side of it, even though it's there, you know, you'll get your 14 card hand and be like, oh, what can I do with this? There's always choice. Whenever I lost, and I think this is why I love Haggis so much, Whenever I lost, I remembered when I could have played a hand better. You know, there's certain trick takers where you're like, eh, okay, I, I didn't really know how I could have done better, right, with what I was dealt. But this one, even when I lost handily, I was like, ah, I could have played that card there. 
It's funny. It's a small thing. But in Tichu, I'm such a nervous player. I, I, I don't like to call Tichu or Grand Tichu. And what I love about this is the little bet. It's such a funny thing uh, to have. And I've played this a lot with someone who's like, oh, you should always just play the, play the big bet. But I love the fact that you can play 15. I'm always so tentative to say I can get out first. But the fact that you can you know, have it at 15 gives you, it gives me personally, this freedom to be like, yeah, maybe I'll, maybe I'll baby step at this round. I know modern classic is kind of a, a cliche phrase to throw around for sure, but Haggis has always left me with uh, a need to play more. I definitely have wanted to, but there's such a, a drive to just see more of that nuance in the gameplay. And I know uh, Tichu is brought up a lot when talking about Haggis um, or Chimera, for sure. But I think genuinely Tichu was the last time I've seen a game like this where not only is the card play super deep, but in Tichu, the people you're playing against, against or in Haggis, your opponent, the way they play, the way they make sets or sequences or when they use bombs, there's such an interesting decision space that Haggis lends itself to where you can read your opponent in what they play. You know, like their flow and pace of when they shed is something that is this meta kind of aspect that Haggis just opens itself up to. So that is Haggis, and I hated it. I'll never give it the seal. This is the worst. <laughs> no, of course not. No, this is a masterpiece. Of, of course it gets the seal. So, yeah. Of, oh, yeah. This is like... Uh, I think I preferred it, too. I know Ryan Metzler likes it at three, and I've seen people kind of go uh, either way. I've played a lot of Chimera at three. I need to play this more at three to kind of see which I like more. The availability's tough on this. I'm hoping for a reprint soon. I know it's been um, it's been 10 years, so that'd be cool, like a 10th anniversary or something. But yeah, if you can get your hands on this, this is an amazing game. So thanks for watching.